And for more on this story, let's bring in Manny Wax, who is the CEO of the organisation known as Voices Against Child Sexual Abuse. Manny, thank you so much uh, for coming on this morning. Uh, it's certainly not the first time that we have discussed this case. Uh, what more can you tell us about this latest development? Look, um, thank you for having me again. Uh, I think from our perspective, it's critical that anyone who allegedly interfered in this case uh, in whatever way, uh, those who facilitated Malka Leifer's escape from justice in Australia in 2008, such as the Adas leadership uh, in, in, in Australia, but also those who facilitated her prolonged charade here in Israel. There were well over 70 court hearings and there were people behind that orchestrating that and from our perspective it's critical for justice for accountability for deterrence to ensure that all those individuals are held to account and in Yaakov Litzman's case the former health minister um, it's been long reported um, of his alleged interference in the case and certainly as someone uh, who has followed this case and has been to most of those um, court hearings, over 70 court hearings, it was very clear that something was amiss and that people were or orchestrating this. And that's why to us, when it was announced that uh, Israeli police were investigating Litzman, uh, a lot of things made sense. And from our perspective, uh, we certainly uh, hope and expect that the Israeli authorities will pursue this matter and uh, hopefully we will see Litzman and perhaps others held to full account for what they have done. So Manny, why has this taken so long if uh, this has been reported for such a long time? That's a very good question. Um, I guess uh, it's not a, in terms of priorities. There are so many uh, uh, priorities for the Israeli police in terms of who they investigate and, and the resources. Um, but better late than never. And um, you know the same question can be asked in Australia: Why mm. those who facilitated Marka Leifer's escape uh, in 2008 uh, are yet to be held to account? Um, so, from our perspective. As long as those things are done, because it's important to send a message um, to individuals who are thinking of interfering in these cases, but even more important, to send a message to victims and survivors of child sexual abuse to ensure that uh, when they bring a case, when they go to the authorities, that these matters will be investigated to full and they will have the support uh, and whatever else they need to ensure that justice does prevail. If he is indeed found to have uh, interfered in this, can we actually expect a, a proper, you know, proper penalties to be uh, forced against him? One step at a time from our perspective. The fact that first Israeli police recommended that charges be laid and as we've just heard in the last 24 hours, it's expected that the Israeli Attorney General will indeed uh, prosecute uh, this case. Um, once he is prosecuted and then found guilty, uh, then from our perspective, uh, everyone is uh, the same before the law. It doesn't matter if you're the Prime Minister of Israel, um, he, formerly in the cabinet um, or just a regular uh, citizen. Everyone is equal before the law. And if someone is found to have done something uh, illegal and in this case uh, really do something that is unthinkable to try to prevent uh, a, an alleged pedophile, someone who is alleged to have sexually assaulted and raped multiple uh, victims, um, girls who were teenagers um, all those years ago. Uh, that is just um, outrageous. And from our perspective, we do expect uh, the law to catch up with them and for justice to prevail. Yeah, terrible, terrible story. And Manny, uh, other news now. And the founder of the search and rescue group known as Zaka, Yehuda Meshi Zahav, uh, who has many sexual assault allegations levelled against him, has now tried to kill himself and is in a critical condition. Tell us more. It's a really sad case in that uh, more and more reports since this case blew up um, several months ago, uh, the allegations keep mounting. And uh, what's most shocking about this case is not that there is a depraved individual, allegedly, uh, who, who is um, attacked sexually, uh, physically, uh, men, women and children using his position of authority and power, uh, but the fact that countless people in all sorts of areas, whether it's in the Haredi, the ultra-Orthodox community itself, 
or within the police mm. who were uh, aware of at least some of the allegations against him, yet stood idly by and did absolutely nothing. And this is why such people are able to use their power, their authority, their influence, their intimidation tactics, and ultimately continue to attack individuals for decades. And that's precisely what is alleged to have happened here. Um, hopefully, somehow he will recover and will be held to account. Uh, the allegations include that um, he was uh, going to be arrested early next week for crimes that are still within the statute of limitations, because up until now, there have been many allegations, but all historic cases from decades ago, but more and more allegations of more recent times have been piling up. And it was reported that the expectation was that police were going to arrest him and charge him. Um, and he decided to take his own life. Uh -huh. So uh, my thoughts are certainly with his many alleged victims. And um, I suspect justice will never prevail in this case, as it rarely does anyway, uh, but hopefully they will get some comfort in knowing that this individual has, uh, the truth has come out about him. Uh, he didn't end up getting the Israel price, uh, and, and hopefully um, they'll feel a little bit better about the fact that they have exposed um, someone who has done such horrible things to so many people, and people will now know who he truly is. Yeah, for sure. All right. Uh, Manny Wax, it's always lovely to have you on. Thank you so much for speaking to Thank us. Thank you.